Hey there, and today I want to do something a little bit different with this video. Usually, I make videos on cartoons and popular shows and films. But today, I want to highlight a series of films that I find to be among my favourites of all time. A franchise that came out of nowhere to become one of the most critically acclaimed film series of all time. A franchise that was able to seamlessly blend modern charm and sensibilities with the nostalgic beauty of a bygone era. And of course, that franchise is Paddington. Now, Paddington's one of those characters that I think a lot of people know, even if they don't know much about him. They know the hat, the duffel coat, and he's a cute little bear. But for a lot of people, I think that's where their knowledge sputters out. They don't really know about the various characters or their relationships to one another, or much about the story in general. So, when a Paddington film was first announced, I think it took a lot of people by surprise. They saw this character they knew from the front of picture books or from toys, and now suddenly a film was being made. And I know coming into my first time watching the film, because of this, I was very much expecting the film to suck. I thought, whew, time to watch a classic character get butchered for two hours. I mean, at first glance, it's the kind of cringy family film that feels right out of the mid-2000s, an era that churned out many cringy family films. But by God, was I ever wrong about this movie. Released in 2014, Paddington tells the story of Paddington a bear cub living in darkest Peru with his Aunt Lucy and his Uncle Pastuzo, who were talking bears who'd been visited by a famous explorer many years in the past. After the death of Pastuzo, Lucy sends Paddington via ship to the city of London, where the explorer promised many years ago that they would receive a very warm welcome one day. Of course, in the years since that promise was made, the world has changed. And thus, Paddington struggles to find a home until he catches the eye of Mrs. Brown, who pretty much immediately falls in love with him and adopts him into her heart straight away. Whilst her husband, well, I think he takes the more reasonable position that having a bear come and live in the house is probably not the greatest idea to just have off the cuff. It's that kind of commitment that you probably need to think through a little bit more and make sure you're certain about. Regardless though, they end up taking him in and promise to help him find the explorer so he can get a permanent home. Of course, this doesn't really happen for him, and instead he finds himself targeted by the explorer's hate-filled daughter Millicent, who seeks to kill him to atone for her father's failure in not collecting a specimen of his species many years ago. Her actions eventually cause a little bit of tension between Paddington and the Browns, and so he leaves the house so that they won't have any more trouble. However, this eventuates in him getting kidnapped by Millicent, who takes him to the museum with the intention of stuffing him and turning him into an exhibit. Of course, in the meantime, the Browns have discovered how much Paddington truly meant to them and how much he helped the family. And thus, they set out to make things right and rescue him. And of course, they succeed and it's happy endings all round, because imagine if they killed off Paddington. That would have been whack. Of course, the happy endings don't come for Millicent, who's arrested, convicted, and sentenced to community service in a petting zoo, which for her is the worst punishment possible. And like I said, I don't really think the world expected much from this thing. But in the end, it exploded with popularity and did well both critically and commercially. In terms of its commercial performance, it grossed $282 million off a budget of around $65 million. So whilst it wasn't exactly setting the world on fire and breaking box office records, it still did very well for itself and made enough of a profit that it was considered lucrative enough to proceed with a sequel. But I think even more surprisingly, or at least more surprisingly at first, it also did very well amongst critics and audiences. Currently, it's sitting on 97% on Rotten Tomatoes with an audience score of 80% and a score of 77 out of 100 on Metacritic. And coming into it, I, and I think many others, fear that the film and the character would be ruined by the writing. That they'd move away from the sweetness and the charm of the character to replace it with other things. Think what's happened to Peter Rabbit, where the famously cheeky rabbit was turned into James Corden. <sighs> Honestly, the first one was fine enough, I guess, but that second one? Whew, that was rough. And now let's never speak of it again. But back to Paddington. The film is just so good in so many ways. Like I said earlier, it blends an old-timey character into a more modern context seamlessly. The script is witty and well-paced. The conflict between the characters makes sense. Each of the various different character arcs are well-structured and fleshed out. The action's exciting and well-spaced. The jokes are funny. The family dynamics and their relationships to Paddington. They're just so deeply wholesome, and then also kind of heartbreaking at times. It's clearly a film that's designed to enrapture children through its cute character design, bombastic action, and at times it's absurd and fantastical humour. But it also allows engagement from older audiences. It doesn't lock you out by being too childish, and yet it doesn't turn kids away by trying too hard to be overly sophisticated. It knows what it is. It's a family film, and it does its job perfectly. But then on top of that, it's also just 
really well made, like the technical side of things. If you've seen a Wes Anderson film, then you'll know what I'm talking about, but it very much just has that vibe, from its cinematography and the way it's shot, to the cutaways to black and white sequences or random flashbacks. It just does everything so well. And so everybody's happy. The kids are happy. The parents are happy. The Paddington purists, if those exist, they'd be happy too. And so we successfully avoided another classic character getting butchered and ruined for a new generation. Until there was talk for a sequel. And I will admit that sequels for these type of films are often bad. In fact, they're usually terrible. For the most part, they often have a new director. And these new directors want to take things in a fresh direction to set their film apart from the first one. Or then they go and misinterpret a character, or they hyper-focus on one part of the film and bring that to the forefront, like, let's do more fart jokes, or let's follow this character, this random side character that no one cares about. And usually, it all goes to shit, and we end up hating it, and the franchise is ruined, and the reputation of the first film is tarnished forever. Forevermore, discussion of the first film is followed by, oh, it's a shame the second film sucks though, eh? Etc, etc. And so of course, when the second Paddington film was announced, I expected it to follow this similar trajectory. I expected that it would suck ass. But how wrong I was. Because it's like Paddington 2 took a look at the first film and said, well, we'll just make this film again, but better. The plot this time follows Paddington and his adventures of trying to secure the best possible present for his Aunt Lucy's birthday. Along the way, he finds himself framed for robbery by his washed up has been actor of a neighbor and sent to prison by a judge to whom he gave a bad haircut earlier in the film. He then goes on to reform the inmates and creates a world of peace and harmony within the prison simply through the power of his earnest and sweet nature and his ability to make tasty marmalade. He then busts out of prison and goes on a high speed railway chase and is almost killed when his carriage falls into a lake. But in the end, he's saved by his inmate friend Knuckles. They then catch the villain, the day is saved, and Aunt Lucy comes to London. And yes, I cried. And no, I'm not ashamed to say it. Because like I said, this film basically takes everything that the first film did right and improves on it. It has the same charm, same humour, the same seamless integration of more artistic film elements, the same heartwarming character development, good pacing, a strong script. It simply fires on all cylinders. And once again, the world agreed. Whilst it was less commercially successful than the first film, it still managed to gross 228 million off a budget of 40 million. And then in terms of its critical response, for a long time it had 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, and even held the record for the most reviewed film to remain at 100%. Toy Story 2 was the next contender, with over 100 less reviews. Of course though, in 2021, somebody went and posted a negative review of the film, and ruined everybody's fun, so now it sits on 99% on Rotten Tomatoes. I really hate that person with everything I have. But regardless, for a film franchise that really should not be as good as it is, Paddington manages to thrive. Moss has never really broken open the box office. Its charm, its weird, its humour, and the heartfelt joy it provokes really cements it to me as the all-time great family franchise. Seriously, what's not to love? Here's to hope in the third film doesn't bring it all crumbling down. But as always, these are just my opinions, and now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of the franchise? You like it? Hate it? Somewhere in between? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know.